Badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom snake. Hi, and welcome to Badger 5 News. I'm John Johnson, and we have a lot of special stuff planned for you today involving science. Now the weather. As you can see over here, this is the remains of the tornado that we had last night. That is all I have for weather because everything else is lame. You know, rain over there, sleet over there, sunny in between. On a happier note, DSI and Planetary Resources are both working on different projects to hopefully send men to a passing asteroids in order to mine precious resources. They're both designing specialized ships for both long-range ones and ones that may come too close to Earth for comfort. They are also going to work on launching, pushing them into the orbit of the moon so they are continuously orbiting the moon so they don't have to chase it all the time. Thanks, Shane. And now sports. So this week on sports in football, um, uh, John, I don't know what these numbers mean. I don't know what these numbers mean. Improvisal. Okay. Um, so this week in Quidditch, what do you mean no one cares about Quidditch? It's always the greatest sport ever, and there's broomsticks. Magic like, isn't even real. You shake your mouth, but magic is too real. Uh, technical difficulties, thank you for your patience. And now commercial. Get your lifetime supply of non-silk minerals today. Non-silk minerals are really rare, so you gotta get them before supply runs out. But what is this non-silicate mineral? Non-silicate minerals don't have silicate tetradons. And silicate tetradons are just compounds made of a silicon ion bonded with four oxygen atoms. There are six kinds of non-silicate minerals that will be included in your lifetime supply. How exciting! Native elements, carbonates, oxides, sulfates, halides, and sulfides. But wait! There's more you must learn! Native elements are composed of only one element. How cool! They're also metallic, so they're a shiny metal looking color. Carbonates are used to produce cement, so this kind of non-silicate mineral is strong. Oxides only form under a rare condition, when a negatively charged oxygen ion is combined with a positive metallic ion. How rare! Ox oxides are used in sandpaper and some airplane parts. A sulfide forms when a sulfide element combines with a metallic element. Sulfides are commonly used in batteries and electronics. Halides form when halogens, like chloride, combine with other elements such as calcium or sodium. They are soft, weak, and water-soluble. That means they dissolve in water. Sulfates contain one or more element mixed with sulfur. Sulfur is also commonly known by its rotten egg smell. Get your lifetime supply of non-minerals, non-silicate minerals, well, that was an interesting uh, broadcast and commercial. And now for our special guest. Hey, what are you thinking about you? Security! So, anyways, some of the animals died because he, like, a balloon where it floated up to the atmosphere, popped, and came back down and got tangled up with some marine creature. Other animals died of starvation with their stomachs full. They ate all this plastic until they couldn't, couldn't eat anything else and then didn't know that it didn't have the nutrients that they needed. So, the plastic now outweighs, outweighs the plankton in, plankton in the ocean. Plankton are these tiny little creatures that um, are the base of all the burning food chains. You know, without plankton, everything else will die. And now, if you haven't felt the need to do something about this yet, then you probably will when you learn that the fish we eat have been eating the plastics that we threw out. So you could be eating the same plastic that you threw away. Now that you know about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, here are some things you can do to help. You could start off by volunteering for a nearby river or beach cleanup effort. You could put your cigarette butts in ashtrays instead of just dropping them on the street. You could send a letter to Congress to tell them it's time to start taking action. Maybe you can bring your own shopping bags when you go to the grocery store, or guilt your friends into stopping pollution at the source. You could go boating and bring a truck back to the shore and ask your marina to dispose of it properly. And one less thing, less is more. So don't buy things you don't need and choose things that have less packaging on them. And I know I wasn't gonna say this, but seriously, just 
recycle whenever you can because you know, before you roll your eyes, I'm just going to show you this picture one more time. So there are a thousand more creatures like this. And think of this turtle before you leave your trash on the beach or that little Jimmy that goes his balloon. We can clean up this mess if we all help out. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jenny Stein and I work at Azalea, which is founded by Charles Lowe, who learned more about the respiratory presentation. So, I'm here to talk to you about pollution. You know, this isn't, probably isn't what you've heard before about, you know, think before you print, or reduce your carbon footprint, or even that catchy little jingle that sounds something like, reduce, reduce, and recycle. So, um, I'm going to show you about how your pollution affects the plants and animals underwater. You know, there's a lot of junk in the ocean water. Some of it's supposed to be there, like dissolved salt, calcium, magnesium, sodium, and chlorine. Others we put there, like the plastic. And a lot of this ends up in something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, also known as the North Pacific Gyre. So over here is North America, and up there is Alaska, and Russia and Japan are over here. And these blue arrows are all the currents that are trapping in the garbage right in the middle of the North Pacific Gyre. So, and it's about twice the size of Texas. So, the fact was discovered in 1997 by Charles Moore, who founded Alcalita. To show you how gross this is, I have a picture. So, there's a lot of junk floating on top of the water, but some of the plastics have, like, broken down into these tiny little pieces. So it's not like you can just go out there with a few nets and clean it all up. And this affects the animals in a bad way. Some of, scientists have found that plastics in the birds' nests instead of like hermit crab shells, and there are a lot of animals who have died because of this. Some of it died because little Jimmy let go of his balloon without knowing that it would go up to the atmosphere, pop, and come back down where it would get tangled up with some poor sea turtle or jellyfish. Thanks, Jackie. And now astronomy! Oh my god, nature's so beautiful. Oh, we're on! Sorry. Hi, I'm here to talk to you about the stars and their stories. So, where's my sheet? <laughs> I was going to clean this, like, you know, two years ago. I just never got to it. <laughs> oh, here it is. All right, so first on our story, we have Virgo, or in Latin, the Virgin. So, like... This star constellation, it was interpreted from the Greeks as like a form or figure of any virgin goddess or a goddess close to nature. Like off the top of my head, I would say, um, oh, Artemis, because she would go through the woods and she stayed a virgin till dawn's time as well. But she would also hunt animals, which I'm totally against, but she would use all the materials. So, you know, like, recycle, right? So, um, anyways, I think that's just great. Next, we have the phoenix. Now, this was meant to be, like, sort of, a sort of form of a bird with flame-covered plumage. And, wow, like, they lived for 500 years at least, and like, wow, that's like great. And um, what the phoenix would do, per se, would be they would build a nest at the end of 500 or so years at the top of a tree, and then ignite itself and burn the tree and itself to the ground where it would die, which is horrible. But it's also beautiful because through the ashes a baby bird would be born and that's just great and the story would continue on and on until times end which is really just touches my heart so next we have the Aquarius or in Greek that was cup bearer or water bearer so the story goes is that a young adolescent named Ganymede lived in the city of Troy. Zeus came down there one day and saw Ganymede in his youth and beauty and brought him to Olympus and gave him immortality, which is just beautiful because the gods rarely did that. And what Ganymede does now, or 
did is he it would bring the gods their drinks. He was the gods' cupbearer and lived there forever and ever. And I think that's just beautiful because life goes on in nature that way and it just lives everywhere. It's beautiful. So that's it on my story of the stars and their stories. You should tune in next week to see when I talk about animal waste and how horrible it is. Thank you. Thanks, whoever that was. Well, folks, that's your five news for today. Tune in next time to see what happens when you put jar of peanut butter in the microwave.